Hey everyone, uh, it's Mike and Melissa, and uh, I just wanted to, we wanted to share something with you real quick. It's not going to be too long. Um, I was praying this morning, I don't typically do these, and I think this is the first time we've done one together, so pretty cool. Um, but I was praying this morning, and I kind of felt like the Lord just started dealing with me about suicide, which is a topic a lot of people don't like to talk about or think about because it is a sad thing, it's a difficult thing, but we felt like it was something we needed to share from a perspective where we think we could encourage some people, especially during this time where the pandemic is happening and some people are losing their jobs and going through some very difficult situations. So we're going to just talk to you all for a few minutes about that and hopefully this will help you or if there's somebody you know that's struggling with this, these thoughts and these feelings and maybe you could send it to them and maybe it would help them. Right? So what a, what is this this term suicide. I mean, when you when you hear about it, what is it that causes people to do it? I mean, obviously, there are many different ways, different things, different situations that take place. A lot of times you'll see it's difficult trauma or situations people go through. They have wounds or hurts because somebody hurt them or wounded them, cheated on them, whatever. Um, you see people with mental struggles. You see people that they just, they see all the evil in the world and they get frustrated with it and they feel like maybe I don't want to be here anymore. Um, maybe some people just get so disgusted with the societal evil that they see in, in humanity sometimes when, when that starts to surface. But either way, if you really boil it down, it comes down to really one root thing, and that is they simply don't want to be here anymore. There might be many different reasons why that took place, but it comes down to the fact that they don't want to be here anymore, and they wish they could start over, they wish they could change change things about themselves or change things about the people around them. And um, we're going to just discuss a little bit about how it can, this, what we're going to talk about can help people to work through that. Um, obviously, it's a process. It takes time. But, you know, when you, when people are thinking about suicide in general, it really, the problem is it, it hurts a lot of people, not to mention just the one person who did it, but the many, the ripple effect of the many people uh, that it affects even beyond that individual, the, the hopelessness and the despair and the lifelong grief that it brings to people that were connected to that individual that decided to take their life simply because they didn't want to be here and they wanted to escape. But those feelings and those thoughts are real. And that's what we're going to talk about here to try to help them through that. Melissa's going to share a few things that were on her mind regarding uh, this topic. I just wanted to say that just because somebody has these thoughts about wanting to kill himself or because you've had that thought before, um, it doesn't mean that you're a bad person or that you're really supposed to do it or um, just because you had that thought. Um, a lot of times people have these thoughts when they're going through really bad situations. Um, personally, I had a situation in my life where I had a neck injury about two years ago and it took me out of work, which I went to school for about 10 years to do um, what I do. And I was unable to do that anymore. I was very ill and I still am suffering from a lot of um, stuff from that accident, but it completely changed my life. I was out of it. I could barely think. I was forgetful. I mean, it was just like I was a new person. So I felt like I had lost my income. I lost my identity as, as um, my career as a, a nurse anesthetist. Um, I, I felt completely at a loss. Um, I felt like my husband had to take care of me and that I, it was just taking up so much of his time. And I know he, he didn't mind doing that, but for me, it was, it was so heavy. I felt like I had lost so much and that, you know, it would be better off if maybe I wasn't here. I never really got to the place where I thought suicide was an answer for me, but you know, in those times when you're really low and the hopelessness there was depression comes, and hopelessness. depression comes and it tries to prey at those times when you're the most vulnerable. And what people don't realize is, yeah, things really stink sometimes and this world does have some pretty bad situations. But a lot of times those situations are going to reverse in a few months and things will start to get better. And not that, you know, the people that you've lost will, will be able to come back into your life or somebody, you know, passed away that you really love not doesn't necessarily mean that they'll, they'll be able to come back. But God's going to bring other blessings and other additions into your life. And the devil wants you or Satan, whatever, whatever you want adversary. to say there, the adversary, yeah. wants you to think that it's not going to get better and that it's never going to, 
you're never going to have anything good happen to you anymore and you just want to end it. But um, even God himself was faced with, with this. And I believe that the adversary, when the adversary was talking to God in Matthew 4. Um, when verse, Jesus was on the mountain. When Jesus was on yeah. the mountain, yeah. Um, and then he took him, or Satan took Jesus to the top of the temple. And he basically was taunting him. And he said, um, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. He was taunting God, saying, if you really are God, just throw yourself down from the top of this temple. Nothing's going to happen to you. Uh, the angels are going to protect you. He was quoting something from Psalms 91. He was kind of misquoting it and taunting the Lord with that. And that just shows you that the adversary has a plan and an agenda. He wants to spoil every good plan that God has for us, whether it's just something in your life that there's something coming down the road. You may not see it yet, but it's some awesome thing you're going to do either for God or in this world, whatever it might be. Um, people just... You don't see that yet. And, you know, here's God, Jesus himself, is just a little bit before he was going to die for our sins and really save humanity. So Satan was trying to quench out that success or that that good that, that was coming, that purpose. Mm, and there is still so much purpose for, for people. And, yeah. and that's mm. what brought me out of my depression, knowing that I still have purpose. Right. I still have a lot to give. I may not be the same. I may have lost this a lot. But there's so much more that's going to be added to my life and that I'm going to be able to give to others because of this situation. So, I mean, she's it's such an amazing point right there. You know, we think, oh, we're exempt from, we should never have those thoughts or those feelings or those emotions, maybe because you're a Christian or maybe because you are in high up positions where people look up to you and you think, oh, I should never have these feelings because I am such and such. But that's ridiculous. We're all human. Um, we all get attacked with different thoughts and feelings that aren't our own. And the fact that she just even showed in the scripture that even the adversary attacked Jesus Christ himself. Now, obviously, he conquered it, overcame it. But um, we, as well, can have that same power to overcome it because Jesus said that he'll give us his spirit to overcome those thoughts and those evils and to have dominion over those things. So what's so amazing about this is she's pulling out the point that if you if these thoughts come against you, it doesn't mean that you are that. It doesn't mean that you are suicidal. It's just that those are thoughts that have come through your head that are trying to get you to believe them and think about them and then dwell on them. And a lot of times what will happen is the adversary will use situations or hurts or wounds that you've gone through and try to take advantage of that while you're already at a low place like she talked about in her life. While she was already at a low place, had lost everything, had all this grief these thoughts just randomly started coming out of nowhere and she knew that wasn't her that's not her she sees life and has joy and and, and is excited about everything that uh, she's got to look forward to a family and everything so it's not it's not normal per se but it's normal meaning that it's not normal for those thoughts to just go through your head because they are an attack but it does happen to all different types of people and even the adversary tried to do that to Jesus himself but what we want to show you right here is I'm going to have Melissa is going to read you a verse after I read you a few things. And I want you to see that there is such purpose for your life. And you don't have to make these decisions. Why don't you read Jeremiah 29, 11, And I want to share something. Sure. So Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Romans 8, 28 also says, And we know that God works all things together for the good of those who love God. Those are powerful scriptures. It's saying that I have a plan and I have a purpose for you. And it's for you to have a hope and a future. Suicide, excuse me, depression, that all brings hopelessness. It's not God that's bringing those thoughts. It's not God that's bringing those feelings. Whenever God comes and his spirit begins to deal with you, his spirit begins to draw you, it's going to bring hope. It's going to bring a future. It's got plans. It's got purpose. So don't listen to that voice because what happens when we're in these situations where we're thinking we're seeing the world in the pandemic, there's this chaos. There's a voice that comes that tries to, to take advantage of us in that moment.
But if you will listen, there's another still small voice, and I hope that we're ministering that voice to you, God, is I hope ministering through us to you. A voice that's saying, no, I do have a plan and I do have a purpose, and let me speak to you through these difficulties and show you what I want to do in your life and how I want to change you and how I want to reveal this purpose to you. But then this other voice comes and says, no, there is no hope. There is no purpose. There's this battle between these two voices, and unfortunately, many times, we open ourselves up too much to the to the negativity, the negative voice. So she's saying that there is a hope and there is a future. And there's something else I want you to see here in regards to the suicide and depression and hopelessness. Those those things are driving you to want to escape from this world, right? It's wanting it's, you're wanting to leave. You don't want to be here anymore because of the the pain and the suffering you see in your life or in the others around you. But you see, this right here should drive you into God's kingdom, and I'll show you how. These things, if you let it, it will drive you into a closer relationship with Jesus and a closer walk with him rather than pushing you away to make a decision that's going to not only hurt you terribly, but hurt all the others around you. But something that will push you into a place where it can help you and help those around you. Look what the scripture says in John 3, 5. It says, except a man is born again. Of the water, excuse me, of water and spirit, they cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The Bible gives us an opportunity to start over. The Bible gives us an opportunity to leave this world. But you see, we don't leave this world by taking our life. We leave this world by accepting Christ and obeying his word. Because the Bible says that if we get born again, see, you're born into chaos, you're born into difficulty, you're born into pain, into suffering, and you experience these things throughout your natural life as you go about it, right? But God is saying that you can be born again, you can start over, you can start in a new, you can start a new life. No, not leaving this world, you're still here in this world, but the Bible says when you accept Christ and you obey his word by being born again of water and spirit, that means baptism and, and receiving his spirit, you are receiving him, you are receiving his power, you're receiving his love. The Bible says you will even be a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new. This is what you people that are struggling with this right now in this moment, while she said she's even dealt with it, other people have dealt with it, but you who are listening that in this moment, you're dealing with the thoughts of suicide and the thoughts of depression of maybe I should just end it and escape. I'm giving you an escape and it's not the way that that voice is telling you. It's an escape into God's kingdom. And the Bible says that he is a king. He is our shelter, that he is our refuge. He is our strength. God is the one that will protect you and God is the one that will love you. God is the one that gives you an ability to escape this world. You'll live in it, but you won't be of it because you'll receive his peace, his joy, his hope, and his love. And that's what God is offering for you. And I'm telling you, when you step out and you're born again, you start over the way that the Bible says you can. I'm telling you that depression will begin to lift. I'm telling you those suicidal thoughts will begin to dissipate. They'll begin to leave. And it will change the way you feel. It will change the way you see things. And it's going to change the way you think. It's time, it's time for you to start out fresh. Anything else you want to add? This opportunity is for you. So don't allow these thoughts, this depression, the suicidal things coming against you. Lots of people struggle and they get hit with these things. The adversary brings them. But God is giving you an opportunity to start over through being born again. Allow this situation to drive you to Jesus, to receive him. Don't let it take your life. Give your life to Jesus. The enemy is trying to get you to surrender your life by leaving this world, by taking your life. And God's just wanting you to surrender your life to him. And he's going to make it so, so much better with peace in your heart and love and hope that comes from you, from him. We love you all. We thank you so much for listening. And I pray and hope that this has blessed you and helped you. And if you're dealing with those things, you're more than welcome to reach out to us and we will talk to you and help you some more. But God loves you and he has a plan and a hope for your future. God bless you. God bless you.